Avicol is, is the album going to be called Mountains of the Moon? It, or is no, it just no, it has no title. So how come there was a title once? That, that was just like a kind of studio working title, a provisional okay. thing. That's what it was. Somewhere, I think, in, in um, December, so maybe November, in, in Q magazine. There was this yeah, talk, I, I, talk I, I, I wouldn't believe everything no, you I read. <laughs> I think it's a mistake to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, when when you first started out with talk talk, sure, it wasn't actually meant as a as a group thing. You started out just doing a demo session with the two others. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 true, absolutely, and just got on well with them, had a good rapport with them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and. Um, but so now you're solo, so it's... it's, it's yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm solo in a way. I, I just kind of think, you know, across those albums, like Spirit of Eden and Laughing Stock, the, the kind of thing that Talk Talk was, was, was it wasn't kind of like a band in a conventional sense. It was very much more like a kind of collective of musicians that, that worked together. So rather than it being kind of like, you know, me and, me and Tim writing and then like, like, you know, Lee there, there were also you know, people like Mark Feltman and Mark Winditch and that we, you know, Henry Lau, there's stuff like that that we kind of work with over a period and and uh, sort of knew and it's kind of like a coming, a, a coming together at the point when you make the albums but then in that period in between so much time that everyone kind of is, is free to move where they like. So although sort of a uh, you know, uh, the the point at which me finishing writing with Tim, I mean, at, at that point, I kind of think, you know, and Lee off doing his own stuff, I, I sort of think, well, you can't call an album now a Talk Talk album which doesn't have those elements in. So, you know, that's, that's why it goes under my own name, not through, like, wanting it to, but through not wanting it to go out under a name that isn't, true the thing of it being like a kind of solo album is you know it's still like written with three other people and it's still performed like with about 16 other people so it's more like I'm kind of like a common link to it do you, do you, yeah. do you know what I mean because I it's like you know I, I always believe much as you write things all, all musicians that record on an album whether a part's written for them or not it's it's the musician themselves that the, the, uh, you know, it's their personality and a part of them that you want in the performance. So th the process wasn't that much different, or what? It, yeah, the, the reason, the, the way in which the, 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 the process was different was just because with uh, Spirit of Eden and Laughing Stock, the, the kind of approach with that was that Tim and I would write in a very skeletal form, let people freeform, take fragments of their freeform playing and then, you know, assemble an arrangement from that. Where with this, it's just everything is written up front. And that then what, what you do with people is, is you ask them to, ask, ask them to stick to the notation, but give them looseness in interpretation. So the uh, laughing stuff in Spirit of Eden, was, was it they played and then you edited uh, or did you yeah, rearrange? Yeah, you, you, you just kind of like, you know, give, give someone like, say, you know, the, the amount of time you can spend up. So like you give someone 10 hours of playing, it's kind of like, you know, you, th you then listen back to that and just take small sections of things that they've played and either use them where they exist or else you move them to other places on the album and create an arrangement from that. It was just an I it, it was just like taking the idea that when when you improvise and you play something for the first time, you kind of play it at its peak. And if if you kind of like play something and then you think, oh I, I like that, and then you replay it, you never quite get it. It's it's like the thing of demoing. You know, if you demo a track, no matter how badly you try to demo it, there will always be a quality within it that you 
subsequently would try to recreate, which you shouldn't do. So it, it was really like that, that as a basic approach. But by, by, by the time we'd done laughing stock, it's kind of like, okay, well, look, we've explored that approach. You know, I'd worked writing with Tim for like maybe 10 years at that point, and it's kind of like, you know, it's important from album to album that you develop. And we just kind of felt, you know, we've reached what is very much like a natural end point. Let's not, let's not force it, let's not lose experimentation and become formula. So that's... that's <coughs> but it, d is it also easier for you to write now? No, no. The, write, the writing just gets harder all the time. I mean, the thing of recording is, is easy because all, all you're looking to do with record is to get musicians that you have, like, you know, uh, an, an affinity with and just get them to be really relaxed and kind of understand mentally the approach that, that you want the music to have. So that's, that's like, that side of things is, is much easier with this way of, of writing up front of the album. But uh, the, the process of writing and arranging does not get easier, it gets harder because you're just continually trying not to cover ground that you've previously used. Okay, just uh, I'd like to go back sure. and work through the years. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, because <coughs> I've been reading some, some old interviews from like 81, oh, 82. Been nice for you. It was nice, yeah. yeah. And it, it's funny because um, you seem like you talk about a lot about this, about, about writing music, creating, and that being very important. And there's also this when you choose Elvis Costello um, to support. Right. And it seems like you were sort of like a lot cleverer than most debut bands. So um, I was just wondering, did you already then? sort of know which way you were heading? No, no, absolutely not. I, I, that's an impossible one. I don't actually think that far ahead. You know, all, all, all I do is just sort of think, well, look, you know, I don't, I don't want to redo what I've already done. I think, you know, where, where you go through those early albums, one, one of the things that uh, made, made a difference was sort of having a second album that was quite a successful one. It, it meant that at the point when we went into a studio, we had much more, you know, much more money available to us in terms of getting real people in to play stuff, and also in the amount of time that, that we had to spend in the studio. So I think that's important. The, the other thing is, is it's kind of like, you know, where we'd begun and we were in sort of a format which was a very simplistic song form, and quite short and direct. All, all you're then looking to do is, is just to try and stretch that form and look at different ways of bastardizing it to get you into in, in new areas. You know, and, and you can kind of say, you know, it's like, it's like the thing of like moving into an album like, it, it, it's sort of like, you know, with, with, all, with all these things from album to album, you just sort of think, okay, look, what, what is the reason that I'm making this album. What is it on this album that I want to do that I haven't done before? Now, where, where you kind of move up to Spirit of Eden, I, I kind of think that was very much like, in a way, where all those earlier albums were trying to get to. And then having got there, I then think the important thing is that, you know, you either, you either just stop making records at that point because you've kind of reached what you were trying to get, or from that point, you, you'd seriously redress, you know, these other areas that you, that you go for. But it, is it only that, or is it also like a, sort of a struggle to the, uh, to the business, in, in a way? Because today it seems like, like a really, um, like a decision to do, well, you had this Call of Spring, which was hugely successful. Sure. And then you sort of did the most Uncommercial thing was that like yeah, a, a big decision? Or? No, because it's 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 not the the commerciality isn't isn't a decision at all. It doesn't come come into it. It's kind of like at the point when we were, you know, looking 
towards Spirit of Eden. That, that was just like a thing of just sort of saying, you know, ob obviously at that point in time you still had, you know, an album format. So your album was very much two sides. And that, and that was just the two important elements, sorry, to making that album were, was just sort of saying, okay, the, the first one is to write music that lasts the whole of one side. And the other was just to look at this new way of arranging where we work with the I arranged improvisation. So that, that, that was it. And, and I've, I, you see, I, I, I always, I, I, I just sort of think, you know, what, what, what you want to do is just try and make music that you can't hear anywhere else. You want to just try and be as unique as you can and as diverse as you can and just see if there are ways of kind of like mixing different areas of music and, and getting them to cross with each other in a way which isn't, you know, ob obvious. So, but that's, you know. that's still sort of like an external decision, if you know what I mean. That's still looking at the other things right. that's around and not, not just go the next step. Or it's, it's, it's also like a decision not to be like anyone else and not to be commercial. Well, it's not a decision not to be commercial because that's not a decision. You know, I mean, I, I just think it's, it was in the nature of the material that we wrote, you know, in like It's My Life and Colour of Spring that they were commercial albums, you know. But it, it's not like... You know, it's it's not like a a decision to do that. You know, because it, it it's kind of like you know why why you get into music in the beginning is because you like music. I mean that's that's the reason when you when you're doing all that stuff in in like the early years and you just sort of like you know doing concerts and and things and whatever. And a lot of the time it's costing you money to actually get up there and and play them. You know, and. The reason you're doing it is for the love of music. It's not to like try and get some kind of commerciality. So it's like, you know, you 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 then, you know, it. it I, I just don't think you should lose touch with that. I think you know you should just try and keep that as as what it's all about. So so did it feel good to to make? Spirit of Eden. Yeah, well, that that was very much for me. That was kind of like, oh, you know, that is the, that was kind of like the ambition in a way. Although I, I couldn't say, you know, at the point we did the first album, I thought at some point we'll make that album. It's at the point when we made it, it was kind of like, okay, you know, with this album, this is what we've been trying to get to because we've got all the musicians on here. We want everything is real, you know. We've, we're using this idea of like free playing and this this thing of like being really loose in a studio, so that when you go in to a recording studio, you're not concerned about you know whether you stop for ten minutes because of the cost, or you're not bothered about you know if if you get someone in the the amount of money it's cost, and then you can't use it. All all of that goes. It's just about getting the right feeling from the people that you play with and making them at, at their ease and just kind of, you know, yeah, just getting everyone mentally where they should be. But you don't, you don't have that, you see, early on. When you first do record deals, you've got too much biting on you to be able to, to, to do that. Yeah, but you had to use synthesizers and stuff. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. So from Spirit of Eden to Laughing Stock, was, what was like the, uh, the new area? The, the, the new thing between those for me was, it, it was, it was the, what, what you could do, you could have, that the you could have, say, say like you had five people playing on the, on the one track, that those five people could all be working in different time signatures that they would all be kind of looping in different places and at certain places these loops would kind of like duck into each other and then they would move out of each other. Uh, and the, with the actual construction of the songs, 
again, we should just try and look, cover some different grounds. So it was kind of like, you know, you, th you take like the first track on that album, uh, Merman, and it was kind of like, okay, let's, let's write a track here where no part of it ever gets repeated. You know, it's just totally a movement like this rather than a, a, any recognisable song form. And then you move into like Ascension Day and it, it would be like, okay, on, on this one, across these three verses, verse one will be a 10 bar verse, verse two will be a nine bar verse, verse three will be an eight bar. Uh, and, but the, what you do is, as, as this thing's shortening up on you, vocally you've still got to hold it, but that what you do is you turn the onbeat onto the offbeat and you have one person understanding the downbeat as being in this place in the bar and the person playing next to him not even realising that's the downbeat at all but seeing it as, it as the upbeat. So that, 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 was, that was the main premise to that album and again we continued with this you know, free improvised form to it. Having, having done that, that was kind of like I'd find it very hard to know where you then continue that. And I, you know, and it's sort of like, you know, Tim w would feel the same on that. So it's kind of like, the thing with this new album was, was it was kind of like, okay, let's, let's, let's still sort of look at using, say, like 15 or 20 instruments, whatever they are across the width of the album in terms of the amount of colour that those instruments will give you. But at any one point, you never have more than four or five instruments playing, and you shouldn't be afraid for that to come down at one instrument. So that the impression that you get across the album is of a very small unit all the time, although that isn't the actual reality of it. And that what you do, you choose the instruments that, that play on, on this album Ones, ones that have, one, ones that can exist in different areas of music so that you can look at a classical area and a jazz area and a folk area and you can say, okay, well look, you know, you, you look at, say, like a piano and that can exist across all three. You take a clarinet and that can exist in a classical and a jazz sense. You take the flute, that can exist in the classical and the folk sense. And you just kind of put it together like that. Then you look at like the woodwind section and you say, okay, well within this group, we want a balance within this, that the, the first clarinet player should principally have a jazz background to him, but the oboist should come from a classical one so that they're sitting at odds. So there's this kind of shift between them that you don't get this kind of classical way of listening to, to the way the beat feels on its own, but you don't equally just let it all fall with a jazz thing. You you work in and out of these areas all the time. But also with, with it being an, uh, an acoustic album, you 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 know there there are two reasons for that. One one is that that uh, the the ideal is is that the album won't be recognisable as having come from any time, having been recorded in any particular year. And the fact that you're working with acoustics you felt means you can't date. And to record in a way that is as realist as this, I think, mean you know, you can't can't date. But then also to hit these instruments at such a low level that that the kind of uh, you know the fragile nature of them and the reality of them becomes as important as the note itself. So that the kind of way in which the instrument resonates or the way in which on a piano the, the kind of overtones sound become almost as, as important as, as the written note. So I think that's, that's kind of... And, and sorry, and the one other thing is, is just with this thing of our recording just on these two front mics with everything in a real geographical location and bringing this thing of, of you know, of, of sound down to such a low level is that you, you, you begin with just the sound of the microphones in an empty room so that the sound 
so, so it's like the empty room is where you begin with. That's when you first start listening to this album, the first thing you do is locate yourself into a room. And then when you're in that room, then the musicians begin to play. So <laughs> that's kind of it. There were actually just two microphones in the room. Yeah, just, just one, you know, two in one location, just to give you stereo. Otherwise, you, otherwise, yeah, you might as well think of it as one microphone. One, if you think of it as one stereo microphone, and then everything just exists in its, in its location, and the microphone never moves. And all the tracks? Yeah, absolutely, across everything. And then everything, mm. you know, all, all your uh, musicians are just located in a place where they won't dominate, you know, where, I mean, it's, it's where the engineer's role, Phil Brown, is of total importance to the way this thing works, because you need quite an ear to understand where people must locate in order for that to work. So instead of mixing, you sort of actually physically move, move people around. Yeah, well, every, every yeah, once once everyone's got their locations, it's, then they they stay there. You know, once they're located, they then don't move. You must have been pretty close. Yeah, on the microphone myself for singing. Yeah, yeah, maybe this far off. A, a track like. Uh, that's what bound. Yeah, sure. It's sure. Really, really close. Well, I, d I don't change my position for that. No? But it's just, you just have nothing competing with me at that point, really. You only have those two acoustics. But yeah, <coughs> that, is, that is very low level vocal. I mean, the thing is, be because by recording things at a different time, you know, recording people separately, but they m they're maintaining their location. You've still got control over balance. So at the point when I do the vocal on Westward Bound, I'm doing it alone. And then you can still, you know, if it's too quiet, you can bring it up in the mix. So you kind of like create the impression that everything is live, but in reality it isn't. You, you s sort of see? It's, it's funny when you say this, that. There are only like four instruments at a time because yeah. my first sort of thing about the new album was it's a bit more intimate yeah. than say laughing stock yeah, not, sure. not as huge maybe but yeah. intimate yeah, in a way yeah. but um another sort of remarkable thing about your music is is that when you talk about the instruments going this and this it's like you could say the same thing about your vocals couldn't you yeah yeah definitely yeah for sure there's there's not these uh, choruses and stuff that much Sorry, not There's not like a chorus in each song, and no, no. So how do you work with this? The 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 thing with the vocal is is just you know, like like you're saying, you know, treat treat it like an instrument. It's not there to dominate. It's just there to sit in the kind of landscape along with everything else, you know. And and it's kind of like start from a melodic point of view, then think about the kind of inf you know the kind of inflections that that it should have sound-wise, in the same way like if you're looking at a clarinet, at certain notes there might be a certain kind of way you want to hear that note, that note, you know, sound. So uh, when you write the lyric, you you have that as, as an actual, you know, block that you must write to. You must write this lyric phonetically in order for it to sing with a certain way. And then you must write the lyric in a way that when you sing it, you're gonna have belief in it. Did did you find words that can that can make this sound? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's that's what I do. I I just work from that standpoint. St I mean, you know, there are a lot of words available to you that can make particular sounds. It's not, but it it it, ma it makes things harder. But it's it's the way to achieve the result. So how important is lyrics then to you? Yeah, yeah. Very, very important, because as, as, as from, from a, a singing point of view, in order to get the performance, you need to believe in what you're singing. And in order to do that, you've got to write about something that has some kind of, you know, inner, inner power to you. Um, does it mean anything to you that, that me, as a listener, doesn't really understand? No, because I, I kind of, I, I, 
I, I sort of think, you know, it's, it's like that thing where I've, I've sort of written you down the, the poems of Stefan Malame. I mean, they're, they're like French poems. And it's like, for me, when I first heard that piece of music, I just loved the music for what, what the music was. The fact that I couldn't understand the language was absolutely a secondary consideration. But then finding the translation, it's sort of, well, that's, that's like a kind of bonus, but, but it's, it's sort of, it's of total importance in the performance, but I don't, I, it's kind of like a slightly secondary in terms of the listening thing. Oh, yeah, it never bothered me. Mm. Okay, just change the tape. Yeah, sure. sure. And it never bothered me either, because it's just, I hear, here she comes, or something. And then it's just, that's sort of a mood for me, and it doesn't really matter what the next is. Yeah, so, but you know, I, you I, get think fragments. I think it's quite nice to be in a thing where you can just kind of like, just get an understanding of, you know, yeah. I, I don't think it's essential, but I kind of think it's sort of nice to, so that, you know, you, you can maybe get an idea of the relationship of why at particular points the vocal hits in a certain way because mm. of what it is that it's trying to put across. Actually, visually, in, in, in when you write the lyrics, you write them yourself, do you? Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. It's, it's the same thing, cause some words are like, what? Yeah, and, and I'm, and gonna pr I'm gonna print them on this one. You are? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna type them, type them out for this one. How come? Uh, so that there are no mistakes, because, uh, you know, there, there are, uh, I've come across, you know, too many examples of things that I've, I've kind of written where when they've been typed up, the word's been mistaken and it's completely changed the meaning of the line. You know, so I, I just want to avoid that problem. So on the new album, there will be lyric sheet, yeah, which yeah, is re yeah, yeah, that's readable. Right. Yeah. So, so, so it, it do matter to the, that someone sort of can see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's not. I think it, it's a, it's a bonus. I don't think it's essential, but I think you know it's it's kind of like you know ni nice to have it there if you want it. I don't think you need to read them. I wouldn't in any way insist you should. <laughs> You know. When you talk about the room that you played in, yeah, it sounds like that room is very important to the recording. Yeah, totally. Um, I mean, and, and the silence. Yeah, I, I, I think the room is tot. Yeah, the room and the silence is totally important because that's what you're doing. You're just existing in a room, and then it's like you're trying to break, break into break into the silence, yeah, absolutely. And then move out of it again. Because we we're, were actually trying to, to make this interview in a place which was more quiet than this. Right. Maybe in a, an old theatre, uh, you know, a place like that. Yeah. Because um, cause silence is, is, is a funny thing. Yeah. A and um, it's not only sort of in between the tracks, there's this silence. Yes. But there's also silence in the songs. Yeah, for sure. do, do you sort of is silence an extra instrument, or do you, how do you yeah, use yeah, sound? Yeah, yeah. I, I just think it's. I, I, I just kind of think you know. Before you play two notes, learn how to play one note, you know, and that's it's as simple as that really. And don't play one note unless you've got a reason to play it, and that's it really. I, I, I like silence. I get on great with silence. You know, I, I don't have a problem with it. It's just silent, you know. So it's kind of like, well, if you're going to break into it, just try to have a reason for doing it. But I mean, in, in the arrangement, in, in, in the songs, sometimes it's like gaps. Sure. I was listening, I have it on tape, and I was sort of, you know, music searching. On, on the stereo. Yeah, go, yeah, that on. must be good. <laughs> yeah, that's good, that is. Yeah, yeah. It will sound better on CD than on tape. Yeah. Because you'll be more aware of the way the room exists, which I don't think you can yeah. be on cassette. But but the silence gives it sort of like a, um, 
sometimes you notice the silence more than you notice the music. You yeah. It's very difficult just to um, um, sit and listen to the new album, writing sort of the letters to someone. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I would I would agree with that. I, d I think you know, I, ideally, the way to listen to it is al alone, extremely quietly. I, d I don't think you should ever push the volume level beyond the natural volume that the instruments would have been in the room and then you should yeah focus into it and I, I, I kind of think of it in a way as as being you know almost like a, you know like like a thing where you meditate and that you just gotta gotta you know locate do you meditate no no I don't I don't um, but Did you come last night? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. And you just, you just. I, I didn't, I did, I didn't get here till late, maybe about ten, something like that. So, I was just in the bar. I didn't, I haven't sort of been anywhere, seen anything, yeah. done anything. So you, you're promoting the album, traveling around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, just a bit more about the silence. Yeah, sure. Because, because, yeah. um, I think it's very. Sort of deliberately, that you, in songs, put like a, a gap of a few seconds and then move on, it's sort of as if to say, you know, this this time enough. Or yeah, so absolutely. C yeah. Can you explain this? Uh, I, I, I guess that's I, I guess that's just kind of like, you know, to give you time to come out of one thing before you move into the next thing. You know, there's, there's no rush about anything. It's, it's, it's like the same things when, when at the point when the album ends. Maybe there's like, I don't know, a minute or two minutes or, or whatever, and you're still with the room before it stops. You know, it, it's just... It's it's kind of like I, I just sort of think you know if if you sort of are are in there somewhere, you don't want an abrupt end to things. You just gotta like come out of it gradually. So that's that's all it is, and I think in the same way that applies at the front and the back of the album. I think it, it applies the same anywhere within it. Um, something else. Um. When you s when you sort of first well actually in the beginning when there was there were people sort of thinking of you as the other Duane Duran, right? Sure. Um, I was talking about you being a bit more clever and stuff. <laughs> right. Um, I don't think we were that clever when we stuck white seats on, but there you go. Yeah. But there weren't very much of this. I mean. No. There was a bit Lee Harris, I see a bit of makeup, and that's sort of it, and then maybe white suits. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I just have to put those things down to kind of like the pressure you come under when you sign a record deal. It's kind of like, you know, you just get hit with all sorts of things at a point when you do a deal. And obviously with, with anyone, you spend so long trying to get a deal, and it's such an, an amazing event to get one, you know, that you can now just earn a living by music, you become quite vulnerable in certain areas, you know, and it's kind of like, you know, if you're lucky enough, you can escape that. But how did you escape that? It was, there must have been some, some kind of pressure. I, d I think, I think how we first kind of got, got to escape it mainly was, was with the It's My Life album being a kind of successful album. And it was one that there'd been very little kind of uh it, it was kind of like in england it, it was sort of like i mean nothing happened with it in england and it was kind of like the record company in england it's sort of like well whatever and then because like elsewhere that became a very successful album it was it kind of felt to me like it was then well because they'd kind of been left you know we'd been left to get on with it and we'd had a successful album well then we'd be allowed to do that again. You know, and I, I think that's kind of where it, it started from, getting that, getting that freedom. 
And then obviously, like with anything, is the more freedom you get, the less prepared you are to give it up. And the spirit of Eden sounds like a record that really, really had freedom. Yeah, totally, absolute. That, that was the first album where it is absolute freedom with no, no dialogue at all. Just, you know, when it's finished and made, it's handed over and that's, that is the end of the story. And then Laughing Stock was the same and this one is the same. And then with this, uh, once you sort of, you're really talking about playing live was a very important thing. But then you stopped that as well. Yeah. Around this period. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I stopped playing live for a few reasons. I, I stopped playing live, firstly, because I wanted to have a family and I didn't want to tour and have children, you know, at the same time. And even with our last tour, which was sort of after we'd made Colour of Spring, it was getting, it was already starting to become harder by the nature of the stuff that was written on that album to actually perform that in a live setup. So it was kind of like on that last tour, what was called the Colour of Spring Tour in 86, maybe like a third of the set would have been the Colour of Spring and two thirds would have actually been the previous album. At the point when you'd move on to something like Spirit of Eden, it would just be insane to even begin to try and think how you could re recreate that. And also, because the nature of the recording itself was just totally driven by freeform playing, the minute you would then get people in to duplicate those parts would be the total opposite of the whole purpose of the way in which that album was made. But this is just one more freedom sort of aspect, isn't it? To what? be able to not, not to have to play live. Yeah, yeah. And you moved to Suffolk? Or yeah, but, and, but the thing as well, you see, by, by also by not having to play live, it then puts you in a position where when you come out of making another album, you know, when you come out of making an album, rather than then for that next year being kind of like recreating that, you can just clear your head and start kind of like, you know, thinking where the next one goes. So I think that, that was another important point before you know, going into the spirit of Eden was, was uh, oh no, no, that wouldn't be true with that because we did talk on the back of that. No, so I'm wrong there, there you go. <laughs> Can't always be uh, right. But yeah. for you being so very important not to repeating yourself, yeah. um, then you do interviews and you must be repeating yourself a lot. Uh, yeah, and that's the worst thing about interviews is because it's like with anything, uh, at the point, at the point you first get asked a question and you answer it, you answer it because it's what you think and then, yeah, it becomes formulaic. The answers do become that. Yeah, definitely. But you, you seem a bit more comfortable than I thought you would be. Right. So. Maybe it's the chair. <laughs> Maybe. Um, also in, in an, an old interview uh, from 82, actually, you said um, you thought at the moment, Echo and the Bunnymen and you 2 were the two bands sort of you thought were most interesting and had right. the force, actually. Um, and when you look at those today... Yeah, that's if I did say that, of mm. course. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Right. Uh, at the time, they were, they were good, Yeah, I think. sure, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, but sort of, at, at one point, they must have travelled one way and you must have travelled another. Do you know? Sure, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Well, obviously, yeah. And uh, which way do you think they went? I don't know. I mean, what way did they go? I don't know. What way did they go? Well, you know, U2 is sort of one of the biggest bands in the world. Yeah, it? for sure they are. Do you think you could have been... No, no. I wouldn't have wanted to have been either. And, uh, it, you know, in I'd, part of... One, one of the reasons, you know, why they've become so big is, is because of the amount of live work they've done, because that is an important, an important part of, of 
success is is live performance. And I mean, you know, they they are masters of it, aren't they? Trace. Quick record it. Um, and, and they repeat themselves too, so their fans are happy. That's sort of like another success formula, isn't it? I mean, look, they're, you know, you tell me, you tell me. Okay. Well, I think so. <laughs> Just got to look at this paper again. Um, yeah. Uh, when you wrote me these things, this is the sort of stuff that you sort of listen to mostly, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, sure it is, yeah. Because um, I wanted to ask you, because our TV program sort of um, mainly deals with uh, contemporary music. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's anything wrong with that? What, contemporary rock what? music, do you mean? Is that what you mean? Well, yeah, pop music, rock yeah, music. Well, yeah, well, I, I don't know what it is, so how can I say there's anything wrong with it? I, I think it would, would be great if, if, you know, music journals and music programmes could uh, be as diverse as possible. I, th I think, you know, in... in yeah, I mean, I, I, I just think it would be nice to sort of say, well, look, you know, if you like this, why don't you try this? You know, and, and sort of uh, not be afraid to, like, look back to other eras as well. You know, I mean, maybe with, with some TV programmes, there's, there's a problem on the music they play because the way it's recorded isn't, you know, on the case enough, but, you know they could be some of the best recordings you'll ever hear. But it, it seems to me that you're not sort of into anything that's going on sort of in rock pop right now. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm sort of like really into music. I, lo I love music and, uh, and, you know, I'm not kind of like trying to get away from anything or say, you know, look, all, 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 all I'm, I don't have any problem with what's going on now because I don't know what it is and it, it doesn't matter, you know. I, there are just like areas of music that really interest me at the minute and all I'm trying to do is kind of like find, find stuff that does that for me, you know. And, and it's kind of like there's such an insane amount of material out there to get through. It, it just takes all, all my time trying to like follow these little paths through you know like you know artists and then associated artists to them you know so but but you've been away for, for like seven years mm -hmm. from the music business well yeah but I'm, I, you s I've, I've been away from the music business for much longer than that I've been away from the music business for like 12 years you know, I mean, I, I think at the, you know, at, at the point when we began, at the point when we finished touring in, in 86, at that point, I think I've been away from the music business. Because at that point, it's kind of like you just work to absolutely what you believe. And then when the, the thing's ready, you deliver it. You know, and although I sort of have lots of friends that are musicians, you know, we don't kind of like operate in some kind of like, you know, we, we, we just, you know. So, and, and what, what did you leave behind then? What was the life? Was it just touring and, or was it, what is the music business? <laughs> what is the, yeah, I mean, you know what the music business is. I mean, you know. This is interviews and... So w would you would you appear on a TV show with like Top of the Pops or something? Would I appear on Top of the Pops? Well, that's a pretty unlikely question, <laughs> really. You know, that's something. That's not something you sort of you haven't decided about. Oh, I, I don't really think it's like 
you know, a real consideration. I mean, no. you know. But um, have you decided not to do music videos anymore? Uh, well, I'd, I'd sort of, again, it's not like a decision. I can't see there's anything on this album you would make a video for. You know, I can see there's things on this album. The, the one thing that I, I did wonder about doing for this album was to get together with, uh, you know, somebody and make a film for this album. And that, that would interest me, but I don't think it, w it would be much more a film along the kind of lines of, you know, if you were sitting in a room and you were sort of like just looking at an open fire and you just have like this area of movement and no narrative and it's just that. And it kind of gives you like something that you, you kind of like look towards but you don't have to think about. And you don't have to consider, but it, you know it's just like a kind of visual focus. You know, I, I could consider that, but you know, I mean, I. I Actually, we we, um, we want to play your music in, uh, uh, from the new album, and then we sort of just considered just oh. um, you know shooting something that we thought was nice. Yeah. So, do you have any suggestions? You know, there's a fire and. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I quite like I, I quite like things, you know. Like I, I, I like water as a form of movement. I, th I think water's got great, great shape and motion to. I like that kind of thing where you kind of like looking at a, looking down a stream, and you get little objects that kind of move slowly and then maybe get caught around something for a while and then they sort of move on. Things things like that, I think. Also, like things from the air. Like yeah, absolutely, going. absolutely. I mean, I I think movement's always a good thing. I mean, I like bird movement. I like you know, uh, I, I just like you know again uh, things things with motion, but but things of motion that kind of you know relate to to the sort of you know the the, the flow of the tracks. The clouds, yeah. maybe. Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. So, so you like visuals? You're not sort of leaving that out of your life? Yeah, I, I like visual things. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've just, I've, I've just finished uh, writing a piece of piano music for like a kind of art, art installation thing. So there, you have sort of an example where I'm kind of, you know, but I'd, I'd sort of. You know, I, I like the idea of trying to get music into other areas that I haven't sort of worked in before. You know, and, and certainly, you know, where you look at things like film, you know, I, 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 but in a classical, you know, in, in a classical sense, I mean in a, you know, I, I don't mean in a sense of classical music, but I mean in a classical sense of filmmaking where it's not driven by music, but the music is really there to kind of underscore mood. I'd, I would r very much like to work in that area. I think that'd be great. Um, but you, you, since Laughingstock, it's been like seven years, mm -hmm. you, you've done a bit of this. You've been, you've been writing music and... Sure. So um, what have you done? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I've spent a bit of time just kind of writing, like, stuff for Woodwind. Spent a bit of time at home learning how to play the piano. You know, I spent a bit of time just kind of, like, experimenting with different sounds and the way things might resonate. And but how could you afford to not to do anything, sort of? Well, I, you see, from, from uh, at this point in time, I can still afford to live on royalties that I've earned in the past. So that's, that's how I can afford to do it. And so the new album is not just because they need new money in the bank? Or? No, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't have made it for that reason. Could, could you imagine yourself living and, and not sort of putting anything out? 
Yeah, I, I can. I ab absolutely no problem. No, no problem at all. I, ca I can't imagine not playing music, but I don't feel any need to perform music, and I don't feel any need to record music. But you know, that's all. All, all that is is. I mean, when you first take up an instrument in the beginning, that's all that is, isn't it? So why should you want anything different now than you wanted in the beginning? Because it's just your, your love of what it is and the nature of the instrument that you care about. So is this why you take things like the new album just being acoustic and just to like sort of, sort of ha to have a motivation to, to try to fulfill sort of an, an, an idea? Do you know what I mean? No, I don't, um, sorry. Since you don't have like the motivation to record the things to get them out, yeah. then you sort of put things up for yourself that to make it sort of like a harder for yourself to record them. No, no, I, I, that that way of recording was really just to get that that kind of geography to the sound. That that's all that was. Yeah. I, d I don't do things to make make my life harder. You know, I find the writing and everything hard enough as it is, <laughs> you know. But so, who would, who would you play to, the, uh, your family or? Who would or I just play to? I wouldn't play to anyone, I'd just sit there on my own and play. You know, I mean, that's all it's about, isn't it? It's just, I, I just find, I, I just find, you know, whether you're with a piano or whether you're with a guitar, I just think the, nat you know, the, the physical feel of the instrument, I think, is great. And I kind of think, you know, in the same way, like, you know, where you have those little Chinese balls that, that you kind of move around. I kind of think, you know, you've got the same sort of therapy on a, on a piano or on a guitar. And I just find it a really relaxing thing to do. You know, and, and like I said, I don't, I, I don't kind of, you know, I, I, it's, it's kind of like, I, d I don't kind of feel any need to have to try and write stuff, you know. I'm really quite happy just to play one note and just to hit it at different volume levels and just, you know, see how long it will resonate for before it stops and things like that, you know, and just look at the dynamic shape of the, this note to the one that gets played afterwards. I just find it really relaxing, and I just really, you know, and, and uh, you know, yeah, I, I, I kind of think, you know, maybe like in the same way where, where people have kind of like mantras and stuff that they get into, I just kind of think of like the piano and the guitar almost like a physical, a way of physically and mentally getting into that. So when the songs from the new album, they didn't just come you have to decide to make an album now yeah because yeah, music's always absolutely, there but yeah yeah absolutely and i think you know it's kind of like at the point where you say okay look, I, I now know what the reasons are for making this album i now know why i'm going to do it because on this album i'm gonna you know work with this room and work with this geography and work in this minimalism stress the importance of sound work acoustically take the levels down so that the, the resonance becomes as important as the note, you know, just those, those kind of things. That, that's actually what I meant before, so you, sort of, you see them as a project, sort of, and not yourself as a, as a musician or, 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 or a businessman. Or well, I definitely don't see myself as a businessman, you know. I just think of myself as a musician first and foremost. Um, in in the beginning, in in one of those interviews, you said that maybe you said that. Yeah, that's um, right. Good. <laughs> um, your biggest sort of dream was that your music would be remembered twenty years yeah, from then. Yeah, sure, I did say that. I remember that one. So that's sort of now. Yeah, that's right. It pretty much is. We're getting there. So, so is it achieved? Do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of think, I mean, I, I, I just sort of think uh, that with, with that statement, I kind of think, uh, I, 
You see, I, I kind of think of the statements slightly differently, that I, I sort of think, you know, the ideal with music is that it exists outside of a time and that it can exist in any time. So that's what I would... I, I think at that time, because I was, I was more kind of caught up in a thing of actually writing songs, the... the that that's why I would talk in that way, and I would sort of s have seen 20 years as like, you know, this kind of arbitrary time, but but something where now you see, I'd, I don't think in a song format, I just think that, you know, l like I say to you, that if, if it exists totally outside of time, that is, you know, the ultimate, you know, the ultimate thing you could, could achieve. So you would rephrase it now? Today. Yeah, I, I, I would now because, like I said, I think I sort of said with a regard to songwriting, where I don't think of myself as a songwriter at all. I, I, I kind of think of myself, you know, just like more as sort of like a musician, really, with an interest in sound and being fortunate enough to work with an engineer who not only understands what I, what I mean by that, but can it help me achieve it? So is that sort of like the goal now? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's hard to say it's like a goal because it's not like something that I expect to do. Because the, the goal is just, you know, you make things for the right reason and that you're fortunate as a musician that even if you can't do it as an occupation, you can always do it. So the, the goal is just to enjoy what you do. And it's, uh, that's it. Now. Enough. Yeah, now, yeah. Yeah. So do you set yourself, okay. Um, the last track on, on Laughing Stock. What is the last track? Uh, that's because um, my name is Warner. <laughs> 